Well, a very, very good afternoon and welcome to the Connaught Rooms here in central London. You know when they say football's coming home, well, this is what it's all about. Yes, we are here where it all began for the world's first football association 150 years ago. Throughout 2013, it is an exciting time again and the FA will be marking this very special milestone. If you're wondering why I'm wearing these white gloves, not about to perform a magic trick, I'm about to hold up the original rule book. It has been called the DNA of football and it is insured at a staggering £1 million. I'm delighted to see so many friends and outstanding personalities from the game. Every year, we invest £100 million into this amazing pyramid of football, striving towards our vision of football for everyone. But the heartbeat, the glue, the selfless heroes of our game are over 400,000 magnificent volunteers, the original game makers. You personally, is this the biggest year of your managerial career to date? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a massive year, not only for me, but of course for the team and for the nation. But it's one I'm really looking forward to. Are your memories of that moment still as vivid as they were on the day itself? Yeah, they certainly are. It's, um, it's only when you get to the, the later stages of your career, like I am now, that, that you start reminiscing a bit and thinking of, you know, of, of the day and the, the event. And it's, uh, it's something when you're playing, you, you never look back. You're always thinking of the next game. And, what you can do in the next game, what your team can do, and it's, uh, it's only, as I say, once you get a little bit older that you, you realise you know, how good a time it was at that point. I mean, 150 years, if you just take stock of that and just think how many people have moved through the game and how the game has developed, and it's developed into what we have today, and, and uh, for a disabled footballer today, uh, as for, for all of the 24 squads that the FA supports, you know, it's a fantastic position to be in. And um, it's great for someone like myself, who's, who's grown up loving football all my life, can now feel a complete part of that football family. You know, even when I look at it now, I can't remember doing that. If you score a free kick, you know what you want to do before you take the free kick, so you can remember it in the future. Whereas, you know, looking at it now, I really cannot remember. In fact, I always say, and, and, and it's true, I was really looking for someone to pass to. Because <laughs> after... Be you well, so I couldn't see you, you were in the bar. <laughs> he, he, he went on the dribble, he's... He went past the first one. I thought he could have passed to me, but he just kept going. And I wasn't in the bar. <laughs> and uh, no, it's just fantastic. He just kept going, going. And obviously, when he got to the keeper, just say, go on, finish it off. It was a fantastic goal. And could it be Manchester United playing at Wembley at home? UEFA has shown just how much English football is valued by, by bringing the European competition back to Wembley. That is, of course, twice in three years now. Yeah, I'm obviously delighted from an FA perspective. I think it demonstrates the, uh, how we can put on events in this country. We had the Olympics last summer, obviously, but you know, to put on this game to represent, uh, reflect on the 150 years of the FA, I think it's a great tribute from UEFA. You know, in terms of size, in terms of success, certainly in, in the history of the Champions League as well, we're talking about you know, the two iconic, iconic teams. And I'm really looking forward to it. You know, Manchester United are probably slight favourites the way they're going in the, in the respective leagues at this moment in time. We're also delighted that Sir Bobby Charlton, a European Cup winner, of course, at Wembley in 1968, is also with us in the room. Um, well, 20 years ago, as a young teenager, I didn't really even know there was an England team or certainly that other girls like to play the game. But obviously now there's five teams that are under the FA for, for women. My role is a regional coach development manager for the Football Association. So I'm delivering coach education in the West Midlands. In your career as a whole, what what stands out most about that year and that I tournament? Think, I think that was, um, that was my most favourite time um, playing for England. The atmosphere, not only in the dressing room, but particularly in the um, it, it Wembley Stadium, was, was absolutely incredible. Playing for your country is an amazing, amazing thing for me. It was the pinnacle of my career. Uh, you have resting 60 million on your shoulders. I rem remember the semi-final against England, and this was the highlight of the tournament. It was what was that atmosphere like? The atmosphere was incredible. I came, I, I was sitting on the bench and I was coming into the stadium before and I he he hear the people singing. It was an incredible atmosphere and uh, I was afraid when he scored the goal. Uh, I was thinking that uh, the, the game was over, but fortunately we have our German mentality to come <laughs> back. <laughs> if we do qualify, how would you expect England to do this time round? 
Uh, England, uh, I accept always more than on the end I see on the results. The same in the European Championship last year, because England has always very good players, well, experienced players, young talents. We heard it before. Experienced coaches look there in the second row. These coaches, the best, uh, best from the best. And I'm sure England is uh, the same when they qualify for the World Cup. I'm sure you, you find them on the last eight, sure. And uh, I hope for England and for the football here, uh, they make better results than in the last tournaments. I think it's always um, high pressure uh, on the England national team to do well. And um, I think what England being contribute to, to football, it will be time for England to win the silverware. I think we are all supporting England. We all know what England is about in this country and the love for the game. And when you look at the current team, the quality and uh, the young players coming through, I think it can be really exciting and uh, they have to believe on themselves that they can win the World Cup. Winning the FA Cup in your role of honours, where does that experience sit? I stay quite um, high. Um, I wanted to leave the, you know, the Italian league to come and experience you know, in England the FA Cup and the Premier League because there's something special was out of it. The opportunity to also meet one of the royal family at the stadium at Wembley in the final was also something very, you know, excited. We're privileged and delighted to have such an amazing partnership in this special year. Um, and that money and all the other money that we raise throughout this year will go towards building these fantastic facilities that Miles will tell us about in a minute. They made my stay there so much better and I think through the positive thinking that the nurses and everyone there was so supportive encouraged, I feel like perhaps I wouldn't even be here today if it weren't for them. So, thank you very much. It's absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, you've seen the amazing work already with Miles. And, and you know, it's, just, it's an honour to be here today and to be a part of this. And I'm, of course, looking forward to being a part of the FA this year and, and, and linking music and football together. And, of course, helping Miles and, and different patients out as well in the Teenage Trust, so it's going to be an amazing year, so I'm very much looking forward to it, it's going to be great. We had a youth development review after World Cup in 2010, we, we now go 5v5, 7v7, we're going into 9v9, 11v11, to try and make that transition, develop the skill base that hopefully we were talking about in the next 5 or 10 years, we can increase that depth of talent in the starting 11s of the Premiership, you know, 30 odd percent at the moment, 40 odd percent, 50 odd. So the, the you know, people like Roy have got a better depth of young talent to choose from. And although we have got youngsters coming through, it's still in different positions that we, we'd like to increase it. And that's going to be about the quality of coaches for men and girl, uh, boys, really. For all the referees that take the whistle, they, you know, they do it for the love of the game. Um, we're in a privileged position taking charge of football matters. We've got, I've got one of the best seats in the house. In, in, in big games in the FA Cup in the Barclays Premier League. It's a wonderful place to be. And, and I guess it's, it's rewarding as well. And I think I speak for all 27,000 referees up and down the country. You know, they do it for the same reasons, for the love of the game, um, to give time in a, a really worthy way and to, to get that sense of satisfaction when a game goes well. So at the moment I walked on the pitch, I couldn't control my eyes and then just, you know, the emotion took the better of me. And I can't not think enough that he was doing a great job when it happened and he felt that it was the right thing to do is to call off the game. And, uh, I think if you're going to have a cardiac arrest, it's best to have in the football pitch because you could probably have the best medical attention. You need the best people who are available to help you. And it happened to me, and then I'm glad that it happened, and it also raised the awareness of it as well. You mentioned, of course, those hundreds of thousands of volunteers. One of them is up here with us. It's Taomi. As a teenager, I was getting kicked out of school every so often, and I wasn't going the right way in life, and it wasn't until... I stopped playing football myself that I actually took up coaching and realised that that was my passion and to be a coach I had to be a role model and that's where I started to figure things out, everything started going into place. What impact and direction can sport have on, on the young people of today? Uh, you know it puts people on the right path really, you know young kids especially, um, I mean I've got my own community centre in Bolton and it's put a lot of young kids on the right path, kept them out of trouble, gives, teaches them discipline. Uh, because nowadays on the streets, you know, there's a lot of bad things happening. So, like I said, put someone on the straight path and, 
you know, the, the crime rate where I have the community centre has dropped by 50%, so that shows that in sport, you know, it can, it can help. It's an extraordinary achievement, and um, I mean, not only the formation of the FA itself, but the codification of the rules that followed. And um, I was out in Rio at the end of November for the Olympic handover, and it was very noticeable how many people actually started, uh, not only by saying well done for the Olympics and Paralympics, but then saying, and of course, you were the country that gave us football. You know, the, the breadth of the game we've all talked about. There are seven million people enjoying the game week in, week out, supported by 400,000 volunteers, 300,000 coaches, 27,000 referees make the games happen. Um, we've got great assets in Wembley Stadium, St George's Park, that we've heard about today. And we've got clear ambition. We've got clear ambition to, to grow the game even further.